Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence. And in today's video, well, in this video series, I'm going to be discussing NumPy aggregation methods. And in today's video specifically, I'm going to be focusing on NumPy sum versus Python sum. So calculating sum in NumPy versus in Python. So um, right from the get-go, I have to let you know, whatever operation we do today, or basically in this video series for NumPy aggregation method has a non-safe counterpart counterpart for NumPy so basically um, this non-safe counterpart allows NumPy to compute the results while ignoring the non-slash-missing values to use the non-safe counterpart you just add none before the operation so for example when we are doing a numpy dot sum, you do numpy dot dot non sum, and we are, when we do numpy dot percentile, for example, we we'll do something like numpy dot non percentile. So numpy has a non save counterpart. This data frame that I'm going to be using in today's video doesn't have any missing values, so I'm not going to be using the non save counterpart for anything I just wanted to um, show you the regular operation so I went ahead and imported numpy as mp and this is a data frame it is a wine data frame with that being said let's go ahead and get started to calculate sum in, in numpy is very simple you just do np.sum and then you pass in your data frame and just like that, we have the sum for each column in NumPy. Now, if you want to do the same operation in Python, it's not that straightforward, all right? If you want to calculate um, the sum in Python, you do sum parenthesis df. And it's going to throw an error. So you can't just pass in a data frame into the regular Python sum function but this is what you can do so you can calculate the sum for each column specifically using Python so if you do DF and then you specify something like beer it gives you the exact same result all right so if you specify which column you want to do you want to do the calculations for for Python it will give you the same result as numpy now what if you want to use the regular python operation method to calculate um sum on the entire data frame you have to do an extra step so to calculate sum on the entire data frame using pure python you simply do sum parenthesis df dot i locate and then here you put in zero if you do if you do it like this it will be able to give you the same answer as numpy dot sum parenthesis data frame. It will do the sum calculation for every single column in your data frame. Now this year column doesn't make sense. Just ignore it. I don't want to drop it, but ignore this information because it doesn't quite make sense. It's just the sum of all the years. If you want to get some calcul some calculation for the entire data frame using just python you will have to um, do this extra step now which one is actually faster if you want to if you are trying to decide if you want to use regular python if you want to use numpy which one is faster well let's just time it so basically we are what we are looking at here is which operation is faster using python or numpy let's go ahead and run this so here using um python sum function allocate to calculate the sum of every single column is about 23.8 milliseconds using numpy sum function is about 1.67 milliseconds so it's much faster so using numpy.sum parenthesis data frame 
is faster than using Python to calculate the sum of every column in your data frame. But then things um, change up a little bit here, okay? If you are using just Python to calculate the sum of a particular column, it's about 46 microseconds. But if you are using NumPy to calculate the sum of an individual column, then it's about 268 microseconds. So in this situation, Python is faster. So if you're looking for speed, you can kind of do timings like this and kind of figure out if you want to use regular Python or if you want to use NumPy. Now, there are other ways to calculate some. This is calculating some using columns, but you can also calculate some for the rows, for each individual rows. All right, so if you want to calculate um, sum for, um, the row, for the columns, you just do mp.sum, and then you pass in your data frame, and you can specify the axis equal to zero, and to give you the same results that we got above. To calculate um, the sum row-wise, you just pass in a different axis. So you do mp.sum, pass in your data frame, and say axis is equal to one. So now we are able to get the sum by row. And what if you want to get the sum by row using regular Python? You have to do something a little bit different. So to calculate the horizontal slash row calculation using Python, you do sum, parenthesis, df.i locate, and then you pass n1. All right. So basically, in this situation, we are able to use regular Python to calculate the sum for each row by using this command inside our sum function. Another thing you can do with NumPy is to specify the starting point, okay? NumPy also has something called an initial method, which allows you to start the addition from a different starting point. So the default is to start at zero, but if you add 10 to your initial, then it will start at 10. Let me show you what I mean. So you can do something that like np.sum, and then in parentheses you do df initial is equal to 10. And the axis is equal to zero is the default, so I don't need to specify that. So if you do it like this, it's going to throw an error saying that the initial parameter is not supported in Pandas implementation of sum. But if you really want to a specific, if you really want to specify the initial starting point, you can specify the column. So by doing this, let's just say beer, for example. So even if you specify um, the column to use, it will still throw out the error of the initial parameter is not supported in Pandas implementation of sum. The best way to get around this is to convert this into a NumPy array. So if you do, um, highlight, highlight this parenthesis and do not mp.array and then um, do this, then it will be able to add 10 to this. So originally, beer was 96.64 because the calculation began at 0. But when we specify initial equal to 10, now our calculation begins at 10. So 10 is added to the sum of the array. If you wanted to do initial parameter for every single column, you have to tweak things a little bit, okay? So here, if you just remove this and do mp.array for data frame, it's just gonna give you the result for the first column. To specify all the columns, you come here and do comma R6 equal to zero. And then you run this. Now, it's give you the exact same result as this one, but with 10 added to every single column. So instead of 170, you have 180. You know, instead of 62, you have 72. And instead of 20, you have 30 right here. You know, so 
you have to manipulate this a little bit to get the initial parameter to work with the numpy sum array. Regular Python also has an initial parameter and it's called, sum, it's called start. So if you go ahead and do for to calculate this exact same thing in Python, you just do sum parenthesis. And then let's say we do df.ilocate. This is to do it for every single column, zero. And then you do comma. And then you do start. You don't even want to specify the start. You can just do 10. Now it gives us um, the exact same result we had above, but 10 added to it. So instead of having 96, instead of having 86, we have 96. Instead of 20, we have 30. Instead of 62, we have 72. So you can implement the exact same thing using um, regular Python. And you can do the same thing using NumPy, but with NumPy, you have to manipulate things a little bit in order to get it to work. That's basically it for this video. That's like the things I wanted to show you in how to do some aggregation in Python versus NumPy. And in the next video, I am going to be focusing on products. So the next video is going to be NumPy product, you know, versus Python, of course. That's basically it for this video. To get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com. This is a platform I created for giving access to my notebooks. If you click on free data science resources, you'll be able to get to this page and Inside this platform is where I keep all my notebooks. Like I create a lot of useful videos and blog posts and I just find it easy and straightforward to take all those resources and put it under one platform. And that's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And then you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. That's my primary website where I have my data science blog post. And as time goes by, I'm going to create more, more data science blog posts. And while you are here, you can also click on free data science resources and be able to get to this page where you can get access to this notebook and other resources. That's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.